present. Ah, so um, uh, what what I've primarily focused on at LBLNet. So a little bit of context. Um, uh, uh, LBLNet is the uh, group within the IT division at LBL, where you are now, um, that uh, operates the, the LAN um, for this campus and for the Joint Genome Institute out in Walnut Creek and also a few offices out in Emeryville. Um, so it's a typical enterprise um, uh, a network environment. Uh, well, not, not necessarily typical if you consider all the enterprise networks, but for a, a research lab, um, it's typical. And, um, and so I've been doing a SDN things for, for a few years, but um, uh, coming in, in uh, to this environment, I've wanted to focus on sort of this narrow deployment scenario. So um, I've taken GIMP and a clone tool and I've removed the vendor logos from, from the hardware. And so imagine, ooh, no, don't do that. Um, imagine that is a typical uh, a network uh, switch that you may uh, deploy in a wiring closet and it's uh, stacking. So um, for network operators may be familiar with the sort of trials and tribulations of stacking. Uh, what that is is typically four switches with four CPUs running, four copies of the control plane, but three of them are kind of stupid. Three of them are just acting as slaves and accepting uh, uh, control plane configuration. Um, and there's some Ethernet cables in the front. In the bad old days, it used to be some proprietary connector. Now, thankfully, it's Ethernet. Um, and so the faucet equivalent is, is not all that different, right? It's a separate server, but it's still a bunch of switches that run something that's kind of stupid. We just call it the, the open flow agent. So what I've been thinking about is how can we realistically deploy this? Um, and, and this kind of comes back to my question to Andrew, which, which was, I'm thinking about that gap because if we can close that gap, we can actually get to deploy the stuff in production. So um, my motivation, my interest, the reason why, why I'm interested in doing this, and this is the technical mumbo jumbo, the white noise, um, which is appropriate for this audience. And so you're very, you're very right. We need to translate into how can I get my boss um, to give me money to do this. Um, and it's, it's primarily um, that I'm interested in automation. Um, but there is also a, another slide on, on really we need to get our staff to do more interesting, important work. Um, we have a multi-vendor network here. Um, it has been great for getting good pricing out of vendors. It's been terrible for managing the network. Um, and uh, I, I would, I'm also particularly interested in consistent, a consistent uh, forwarding plane behavior, right? So we can define um, models that can be used for configuring equipment from different vendors. But if their interpretation of the behavior differs between vendors, those models are meaningless. Um, so we see this uh, tip very typically in layer two security features that are not defi well defined within RFCs or, or IEEE standards. So let's take the snooping feature, uh, um, layer two sn snooping feature for um, looking at something like DHCP. Different vendors will implement that differently. Um, and, and I think there's some other new capabilities we could have in the network if we actually deploy that. So um, I've had a, a bit of a path and it was via New Zealand for about three weeks. And um, it's very interesting that that uh, SDN is a thing there. Um, and uh, these are slides from from a presentation that I gave um, uh, two days ago. Um, so you'll see FaucetCon starts tomorrow. Um, but uh, I've also done it the wrong way um, in, in 2016 playing with Fawcett and, and, uh, and so I've gotten some interesting sort of layer eight to layer nine insights. Um, so these are some photographs of you know, previous sort of hardware deployments and, and get togethers. One of them is in New Zealand. Um, and uh, we find that typically we, um, you know, the, the problem, the business problem that, that we need to solve is that we just don't have enough engineering bandwidth. We, we end up spending money um, because of the federal budget cycle, um, buying hardware uh, before it is strictly speaking needed. And so we usually have more hardware than we have people to deploy that hardware and configure the hardware. So getting more efficient at actually deploying, configuring hardware and managing hardware is, is um, 
is something that could actually make my team more effective. Um, and so in addition to the first slide, the technical mumbo jumbo, I'm also interested in, in removing the drudgery um, from, from network engineering. Um, but one thing that I don't think any single operator can realistically do, unless they are Google, um, is, is, to, is to build this, to, to build the operating system for, for the SDN network. Um, so thinking about change management, and this, this comes back to the gap, um, is that doing something before you're ready um, to do the big thing is, is key to, to be able to make some sort of progress. I'm not going to get deep into that. Um, so what we've done is, is identify Fawcett as something that has promise. Um, look at some of the gaps. What are the things that we would require in that wiring closet in order to realistically use Fawcett? Um, build out some dev test systems and then begin using it. And, and this is really early days. It's taken far longer than I've expected. Um, and then also come to the plug fest and have a look at the hardware. Have a look at what the maturity of the hardware is. Try and configure the hardware. Find all the traps because they are traps. Um, things that don't behave the way that we expect. To get a view of at what point in the future would we be able to say, it is now safe for us to say that we're going to deploy Fawcett and we're definitely not going to build, deploy a, a traditional network. Um, so I have some thoughts about how um, we can go about building out network monitoring, network configuration management systems right now that would be useful for the network that we have right now that would dovetail at some point in future to be able to run with a Fawcett control network. Um, so there is a uh, configuration management side of that, and then there's also a network monitoring side of that. Um, and, uh, and then uh, a few things that I have learned um, in this process and, and in previous mistakes that I've made um, is that, well, I think I've already spoken about we need to solve real problems. Um, I'm afraid that there may be like an SDN cargo cult, and I think Angel also spoke about this as sort of um, operator CSDN. They see you can go to a GitHub repository, you can download some code, you can run SDN, and then that's it. You expect magical things to happen because you got a few switches and you ran Fawcett. Um, we need to move beyond that. Um, and another one that I would like to point out is the person doing this is not me. Um, I'm, a, I think, like many um, technical managers, somebody that um, put down their toolbox and began managing people um, and then have that um, interest and desire to do technical things. And so one of my personal challenges is I need to get engineers to do this um, because my previous mistake has been to be the guy doing this. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased to say that at LBLNet, um, at least with our pilot deployment so far, and to some extent for the conference network, we've succeeded in getting other people to um, do that sort of stuff. Um, and also, you know, I'm a strong believer that uh, the only way that really it's going to sink in and we're going to build true skills um, in the SDN space is if it's not me saying, you will deploy Fawcett or you will get fired, because um, I don't think that'll be productive. So um, these are some photographs just before uh, the event started of the hardware that's been deployed. And, and prior to that, it was actually deployed um, in our wiring closet at the NOC, which also happens to be the break room. Um, and this, by the way, is something that I would recommend because when you are heating your lunch up in the microwave oven, you can stare at the rack and you can contemplate your SDN network. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, what I'd like to, um, so we've learned a few things. Um, one is prioritizing um, and, and finding budget for, for these kind of exploratory future work things is, is hard, but it needs to be done. Um, vendors are really, really weird. Um, I think we're kind of preaching to the, the choir to the vend vendors that are in the room right now, but um, speaking to sales engineers and account managers and getting a totally different message from um, from, uh, you know, engineers that are actually building the code. It's, it's weird, but um, it's, it kind of makes sense um, when you consider that 
Um, information really diffuses very slowly um, through large vendors. Um, and then what I'd like to do in future, so I, I find the GNMI uh, conversations extremely interesting um, because so far um, I've, I've found that the um, you know the idea that we'll we'll do SDN and then deploying networks would be easier is it's kind of been the opposite. So configuring OpenFlow agents so far has actually been for something that should be really simple, surprisingly painful. Um, so I'm interested in in uh, the the actual data plane ad advancing to the point where it actually meets that expectation. Um, Finding deficiencies and bugs and faucet and, and, and working on those. Um, and, and beginning to think, um, and, and I suspect that Stephen's talk may have addressed some of these things. Unfortunately, I missed it. Um, trying to think um, slightly differently about how we, um, how we build networks. So um, one of the things, uh, it's an analogy that, that comes to mind is um, uh, in, a, in a previous job some years ago, um, at an institution where uh, we had very constrained bandwidth, um, we conflated security and and um, and and resource management. Mm -hmm. um, so we would do things like decide that Skype is bad because Skype uses too much bandwidth, and then we block Skype on a firewall. And then you do that for twenty years, and then you end up with a security policy where it's absolutely not clear what your objective is. Um, and, and I think we've actually been doing the same thing in enterprise networks. We've, we've got the standard tool set that has these blue stencil icons and we kind of paste them all over and we just kind of repeat that process over and over again to the extent where it's not clear why you are assigning a VLAN. Are you doing something security related? Are you doing something to make the network sc scale? Are you, um, are you, uh, you're probably doing both of those things but maybe sometimes you're not doing one of the two things. Um, and so I'm, I'm interested in SDN's capabilities to kind of change the way that, that we, we think about how we design and build networks. Um, and I kind of have this idea and it's, it's I, I see people snicker when cyber RFP comes up. Um, You've been through the gates at LBL. I would like next to the guard shack there to be like another little booth that's got some Ethernet cables coming out the wall. And, and that's how we're going to deal with vendors. They, they will come, they'll plug their hardware into the Ethernet cables. And then when the test passes, then the gate will open. Nah. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of my dream. Um, and, and, and really, uh, the, the idea that... Um, that we could uh, address security uh, concerns or introduce new features into the network um, in uh, sort of a continuous integration, continuous development style is also very interesting to me. So those are the things I'd like to do. Um, and that's, that's the talk. <laughs>